Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Animals of Long Ago Delphian free webinar. Um, my name is Sterling Hepburn, and this is the, the last Animals of Long Ago webinar um, in our series uh, that we've been doing for the past few weeks. Um, I want to make sure that we can finish all of the reading, um, and then I want to go back and pick maybe a couple activities to do. Since we don't have, I don't think we'll have enough time to do all of the activities. Um, we're just going to do the reading um, and then pick the activities later. So um, if you're if you're joining for the first time, what we've been doing is uh, reading a section from the book Animals of Long Ago, um, which is free on the heronbooks.org website um, right now. And we will read a chapter about like leaf eating dinosaurs, for example, and then we'll draw them and um, or make them out of clay or out do like I've been doing a cardboard cutout of them as we go because I, I don't have any clay and I, I think a lot of you at home don't either. And so we'll just be, we'll be, we're doing that and then adding them to this uh, display that we're, we've been making. So there's, you know, some grass and leaves and rocks in there and um, drawing the dinosaurs is, 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 I think really cool. I'm not, it's fun by itself, but it also helps you see more about what the, like what's different about dinosaurs from each other and, um, and yeah, this is really great. So that's so there's the display. And then we also had made a landscape um, as well. I have a green screen behind me. So <laughs> some of the green might disappear. But we, we made a landscape on a large piece of paper as well. And then we also drew some dinosaurs on paper and then glued them on as well. Um, so we um, so yeah, why don't we just get straight to it? Let me first see if there's any questions. And then um, and then we're going to do some more reading. And then we'll pick some activities to do after that. Um, okay, a couple of questions having to do with my last seminar. Um, here, my e what is my email for the three D modeling? I'll just put my email in here. Okay, cool. And then Katya says, um, "Oh, so here, S my, my email is sbhepburn at delphine.org." What is the activity we're doing today? Katya asked. We, well, first we're going to read the book and then we're going to pick an activity. There's a lot of activities left to do, um, but we don't have time to do all of them for in one webinar. So we're just going to do all the reading to because I think that's the, I like that part the most because we get to learn more about dinosaurs um, straight from the book. And then, um, then we'll just pick maybe one or two things and we'll just do activities until we run out of time. But let's just go ahead and start with the reading. So let me share my screen with you. This is Animals of Long Ago. Um, here we go. Okay, so yeah, last week we read two chapters. We Chapter five was about meat-eating dinosaurs, and chapter six was where did our animals come from, and it talked about how animals changed over time. And like, for example, this was a horse that if, what went from this to this over 50 million years. And this is what an elephant used to look like 37 million years ago. Um, okay, so we, we read this last week. So we're going to go ahead and continue reading um, chapter seven. So here we go. Finding out about animals of long ago. How do we know so much about dinosaurs and other animals that lived on Earth long ago? One way we found out is by digging in the ground to see what's buried there. Sometimes people find bones of animals from long ago and use them to figure out what the animal they belonged to looked like. We've also found out things from old rocks or fossils. Dinosaur footprints are dino and dinosaur bones have been found in rocks, for example. These bones and other signs of dinosaurs are called fossils. There's some dinosaur bones and some fossils there. Rock fossils. Long ago, after a dinosaur or some other animal died, the soft parts of the body rotted away, leaving only the hard bones. These became covered with mud or sand that eventually hardened and turned to rock. The bones hardened too, but turned into a different kind of rock. Much later, the outside rock might wear away so the bones could be seen. 
Sometimes shells or tree trunks turned to rock the same way. Animal parts or plant parts that have turned to stone are called petrified fossils. Petrified means turned to stone. Other fossils. Sometimes dinosaurs left their footprints in mud. Later, the mud hardened into stone, leaving rock with the dinosaur footprint in it. Sometimes animal parts and plants, sorry, sometimes animal parts and plant parts like leaves were buried in mud. The parts rotted, but prints of their shapes were left in the mud. If the mud turned to stone, then the print was saved in the rock. These are fossils too, but are different from petrified fossils. They are trace fossils. A trace is a mark left behind by something. So a trace fossil is something left in a rock that shows an animal or plant was once there. An animal track, a leaf print, and a dinosaur footprint found in rocks, these are all trace fossils. Scientists called paleontologists look for fossils. They dig them up out of the ground and break open rocks to find them. From the fossils they find, paleontologists can tell something about what an animal looked like and how it lived. Paleontologists are still finding out more and more about animals that lived on Earth long ago. They keep searching and finding more and more clues and information. They're always learning new things about dinosaurs. Sometimes this new information changes what we think is true. Often they can tell how large the animal was, possibly even how it died. From its teeth, they can tell whether an animal was a plant eater or a meat eater. Sometimes they can tell how well the animal could see, hear, or smell. From fossils, we can find out a lot about the animals and plants of long ago. Perhaps you too would like to search for fossils and help us learn more about the animals of long ago. Yeah, that would be amazing. I'd love to find, find fossils. Okay, let's, let's read what these activities are. So um, look at several pictures of several different kinds of fossils. Try to find two petrified fossils and three trace fossils. And then number two is, if available, look at real examples of a petrified fossil and a trace fossil. Uh, notice what is similar and what is different about them. And then number three is draw a picture of the two kinds of fossils. And then four is in writing, explain what a fossil is and give two ways they are made. Okay, so I think, um, so since we are, um, this, since this is our last day, I'm gonna go ahead and first, we're just gonna finish reading the book. And then maybe if we have time, we'll go back and do some of those activities. Um, but yeah, let's go, let's go ahead and finish the book first and then we'll see how much time we have left. Um, oh yeah, let's also see if we have any questions. Um, okay. Katya, oh, thank you, okay. <laughs> okay, now I know how to pronounce it. Okay, Aubrey, hello, thank you for coming. Um, Isa says, we didn't read where animals come from. I think that we, I think we covered that in one of the earlier chapters. Maybe, or maybe not. I don't, I'm not sure. I think, I think it's very, it's talked about just for a second, but um, it doesn't talk about it a lot in this particular book. Mauricio says, I'm late. What did I miss? Um, all we did so far was read um, the chapter about how to discover um, animals of long ago, like the difference between um, like the bones of an animal that we found underground or fossils that are petrified. Um, or like the trace of them is rem remains in some rocks, so trace fossils, basically. Um, Isaiah says, hi, sorry I'm late, no problem, welcome. Peyton says, hi, hello. Milo says, I've always wanted to be a paleontologist. Yeah, it sounds like it'd be so fun. I would love to do that. Um, yeah, I think it would be really cool. Okay, let's continue on, let's finish the book. And then um, if there is a particular activity that you really want to do, you can let me know. Um, but let's just finish with the reading part first and then we'll go from there. Okay, let's see. Make your own fossils. Oh, okay. Well, we're not, we definitely don't have time to do this today, unfortunately, but this is something if you, if you can find, um, 
this plaster of Paris, which is a, something you can find at a hardware store, um, you can make your own fossils at home. So um, you can ask your parents about that if you, um, if you want to do this activity. Um, what you should do is have your parents download the, um, this book from heronbooks.org, and then you can see what the recipe is for making, for making the fossils, basically. But this is really fun. There's a whole bunch of steps that you can do here, and it tells you with pictures how to make your own fossils there, which is really cool. Okay, the next chapter, if you want to know more, Oh, okay, yeah, let's read, let's read these. It's like more, these are more facts about dinosaurs. And I think this might be the last part of it. So let's see. Um, let's see. I'm just trying to zoom in here real quick. Um, there we go, that's better. Okay, so fun facts. Allosaurus means different lizard. It lived from about 155 to 150 million years ago and was discovered in Utah in USA. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in even more because the pictures of these dinosaurs are awesome. Okay, um, here we go. Wow, okay. I'm probably not going to pronounce this the right way. <laughs> Ambulocetus? Ambulocetus, maybe. Okay, lived about 50 million years ago. Its name means walking whale. It grew to be about 10 feet long and weighed 550 pounds. It lived in what is now Pakistan. Wow, that's so cool. Ooh, okay. Uh, let's see if I can pronounce this one. <laughs> Archaea, Archaea, Archaeopteryx, Archaeopteryx, maybe. Obviously, don't quote me on any of these pronunciations. <laughs> I'm just doing my best. Archaeopteryx lived about 150 million years ago. Its name means ancient wing. Wow, that's really cool. It grew to be almost two feet long and weighed two pounds. It lived in what is now Germany. Cool. That looks awesome. Okay. So beep, Bapiosaurus, Bapio, Bapiosaurus means Bapio lizard, named after the city of Bapio, China, where it was discovered. It lived about 130 million years ago and grew up to seven and a half feet in length. Awesome. Oh, here we go. Brachiosaurus means arm lizard. It lived about 160 million years ago. The bones of this dinosaur were found in Colorado, USA. Awesome. Brontosaurus means thunder lizard. It lived from about 160 to 145 million years ago. The bones of this dinosaur were found in Colorado, USA. Wow, a lot of them are found in the United States. All right, let's see if I can pronounce this one. Comps, Compsonagthus. <laughs> Compsognathus, Compsonagthus means pretty jaw. This animal lived from about 155 to 145 million years ago in Germany, Bavaria, and France. It grew to be four to six feet long and weighed six and a half pounds. Oh, it was pretty small, really small. That's so cool. Wow. Okay, let's go up to the top of this section now. Maybe we can do one of the activities um, using some one of these new dinosaurs or animals. Um, maybe drawing a fossilized version of one of these. We can maybe we could do something like that. Tell me what you guys think in the Q and A, and I'll, I'll read all of your questions after we go through these. Okay, the Demetrodon lived from about two hundred and ninety to one hundred and forty-five million years ago. Bones of this animal have been found in, in the U.S. states of Texas and Oklahoma, as well as in Canada. That's where I'm from. Cool. Derudon means spear-toothed. It lived about 40 million years ago in what is now Egypt, Pakistan, and New Zealand. It could grow to 16 feet long and weighed a th about 1,000 pounds. Wow. 
Dunkly, oh, Dunkleo, Dunkleosteus. Dunkleosteus means Dunkel's bone. <laughs> After the man who first found the bones, it lived about 380 million years ago in places such as Poland, Morocco, Belgium, and the US. It could grow to about 30 feet long and weighed almost one ton. That is crazy. Can you imagine sailing a boat and seeing something like this? <laughs> We're going scuba diving and seeing a one ton fish that looks like that. That's just incredible. I had no idea these were that big. I love that. Okay, let's see. Pronouncing these is the hardest part. Hi, let's see, Hyracotherium. Hy Hyracotherium lived about 50 million years ago in parts of Europe and North America. It grew to about two and a half feet tall and weighed about 20 pounds. Wow, looks really similar to animals of today. Maybe like it's like bigger than an antelope. It's kind of like a deer almost. It's cool. Uh, okay, Kuchisitis lived from about 45 to 43 million years ago in places such as Pakistan and India. It grew to about eight feet long and weighed up to 330 pounds. Wow, 330 pounds. So that, so this was small in comparison to this. That is amazing. Holy smokes. Okay, Myasaur means good mother lizard. Oh yeah, we, we learned about this one. Um, 80 to 65 million years ago, uh, bones of this one were found in Montana, USA. 30 feet long, wait, this one weighed up to four tons. Holy smokes. Mammoth lived from about 5 million to 10,000 years ago. Its bones have been found in Alaska, Siberia, and the Arctic. Some grew to be 11 feet tall and weighed six tons. Holy mackerel, that's amazing. All right, let's see, go over here. Mary Chippis lived from about 20 to 10 million years ago in North America. It grew to 18 to 30 inches tall and could weigh up to 220 pounds, very horse-like. So is this one. Mesohippus means little horse. It lived from about 40 to 30 million years ago in what is now North America. It grew to about two feet tall and about four feet long. Wow, that's that's really awesome. That's very small. Maybe you maybe if we lived back then we could own a pet Mesohippus. Okay, here's another one that's hard to pronounce. Let's see. Morith Morithirium. Morithirium. Okay, Morithirium lived about 35 million years ago in parts of North Africa. It grew to almost eight feet long and weighed about 200 pounds 200 pounds. I believe this is the same one that ended up. Um, as in the modern day elephant, I'm pretty sure, because this is like the beginning of the trunk. And it looks the same as the image that we saw up above in that earlier chapter. Okay, Orn ornitho ornithomimus, ornithomimus lived about 125 million years ago. The bones of this animal were found in Colorado. USA. It grew to almost 12 feet long and weighed about 370 pounds. That is massive. That's, that's just incredible. Wow. Okay. Pachycetus lived about 124 million years ago. The bones of this animal were found in China. It grew to th three to seven feet long and weighed about 50 pounds. Huh. Cool. It almost looks like a boar. Or like the or an early version of a pig, maybe, or something like that. Pleohippus lived from about 15 to 2 million years ago in parts of US and Canada. It grew to six feet tall and eight feet long, weighing almost a thousand pounds. This just looks almost exactly like a donkey. I wonder if the donkey has remained almost unchanged for 15 to 2 million years. That seems impossible. But it look, I mean, it just looks almost exactly like a donkey. That's, that's amazing. Okay, um, wow. Pro <laughs> Protarchaeopteryx. Protarchaeopteryx lived about 124 million years ago in what is now China. It grew to about three feet tall and weighed only about 10 pounds. Oh, that was pretty small. Such a big name for such a small bird. I mean, small compared to some of the other birds, like this other one, this one, 
270 pounds. This one's 10 pounds, but it's still big. Like that's, <clears throat> that's much bigger than a chicken per se. <laughs> okay, Oop, there we go. Here's some good ones. I think this is the last row of them and then we'll pick an activity. Yep, okay. <clears throat> Smilodon is often called a saber-toothed tiger, Oops. <clears throat> which means knife tooth. It lived from about two and a half million to 10,000 years ago. Living in parts of North and South America, it grew to 500 to 800 pounds. That is incredible. Holy smokes. Okay, here we go. This is actually pretty fun to try to pronounce these. Sinosauropteryx. Sinosauropteryx lived from about 130 to 122 million years ago in what is now China. It grew to about three and a half feet long and weighed one and a half pounds. So tiny, it was like a very small, it almost looks like a furry tiny T-Rex with a beak instead of teeth, I guess. That's amazing. Okay, there's a rat-like one, Spina, Spina, Spina lots, Spino, spinalitzies, spinalitzies <laughs> means spiny robber because it had hedgehog-like spines. It lived about 125 million years ago in what is now Spain. It grew to about nine inches long and weighed one to two pounds. Wow, cool. Those spines probably really helped it survive because so, so small is probably food for a lot of, a lot of animals but they must have had a hard time eating it. <laughs> and they learned their lesson, I bet, pretty quickly. Okay, Stegosaurus means plated lizard. It, lives, it lived from about 155 to 150 million years ago in places like Africa, China, Europe, and Mongolia. In the US, fossils of this animal were found in Colorado, Wyoming, and Utah. Cool. Triceratops lived from about 68 to 66 million years ago. Living in parts of the US and Canada, it grew to almost 10 feet tall. You know what's really interesting to me is learning about when these animals were alive, not all of them lived in the same time period. I mean, I, I think a lot of you probably knew that already, but sometimes you'll see paintings, you know, like maybe this one that's behind me, you know, it has perhaps a Brachiosaurus and what's this? I think that's probably a Velociraptor and maybe a Maya, or here, I'll stop my share for a second. Maybe, maybe, I mean, maybe that's a Mayasaurus and may, this could be, Maybe that's an Allosaurus, but let's see if they actually, I mean, like a lot of the times you'll see images of, of dinosaurs, you know, a lot of different ones together, like a Triceratops along with the Brontosaurus and a T-Rex. But I wonder if they all actually existed, like the ones that are the most popular at the same time period. I mean, okay, so like the Stegosaurus didn't, wasn't alive at the same time as the Triceratops, according to this at least, right? So the images with these two dinosaurs in them at the same time is, is not really, it's not really correct. Like the, like a hundred million years went by until we saw a tri, like after the stegosaurus died and the triceratops was alive. So it's kind of, it's amazing to think about that. Like at each, you know, moment in time in the far past, you would get di just a, like a different assortment of the dinosaurs that we know about, um, which is really interesting to me. Okay, almost done here. Tyrannosaurus lived from about 70 to 65 million years ago. Bones of this dinosaur have been found in US states such as Wyoming and South Dakota. And Vega, 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 Vegavis, it was found on Vega Island in Antarctica and it's thought to have lived 70 to 60 million years ago and it grew to be about one foot long. Cool. Okay, well, awesome. We finished all the reading, yay. Good job, everybody. Um, thank you for sticking with me here. Let me check for the Q&A area really quick and see what we got. I have lived in Utah. Wow, cool, Evelyn. I wonder if they had any museums with like the original Utah dinosaur bones. If there is a museum, um, close to you. I, thought, I mean, once it opens up again, that'd be really cool to see. As I says, sorry, I'm late. What are we talking about? Uh, we're just finishing the um, Animals of Long Ago reading. Um, Mauricio says, hello and thanks. Hello. April says, what are we talking about? I think this, maybe these questions are old. Let me scroll forward a little bit. 
Uh, Mackenzie and Denali Reeves says, say Archaeopteryx. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Helping me pronounce these dinosaur names. Some of them are pretty, pretty tricky. Um, April says Dime, Dimetrodon. Oh, cool. Here, let me zoom out on this, um, on this one here. Dimetrodon. Which one was that one again? Oh, Dimetrodon. Yeah, cool. This one. Holy smokes. Dimetrodon. Nice. And then, um, let's see. Can you guys help me pronounce? Let's see. I was wondering about a couple of these ones. This one, Bapiosaurus, and then Archaeopteryx. Did I say that? Oh, yeah, Archaeopteryx. Yeah. Mackenzie helped me with that one. And then, um, yeah, Mackenzie and Denali. And then, um, what about this one? Cuchacetus? <laughs> Cuchacetus? Um, Evan says, does Saurus mean lizard? Yes. Ellen says, I think that would be awesome. Yeah, totally. Um, Angelica says, what are we talking about? Uh, we're, just, we're just finishing reading the book um, of Animals of Long Ago. Evelyn says, aren't all of them hard to pronounce? Yeah. <laughs> some of them are really hard, and some of them are a little bit easier. Like, Mayasaura is so easy to say, but Hyracotherium <laughs> for this one that looks like a deer is kind of, it's, it's just amazing. April says, okay, let's see. Evelyn says, tiny T-Rex is cute. Yeah. April says, yeah, donkey. Totally. Um... Isa says the dinosaurs from Jurassic Park one that spits venom never existed. Wow, I didn't know that. It's so funny that they had to invent a dinosaur that did that when there's, I mean, there's so many incredible dinosaurs that we know about already. Like, why did they have to make one, make one up, you know? Ellen says there was a huge one. Um, Peyton says hi. Okay, awesome. Um, Zaya says, so many dinosaurs, cool. Oh, Mackenzie and Denali says, no, it said Dimeotrodon. Dime e, sorry, Dime e Dimeotrodon. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for helping me. Um, okay, cool. Evan says, can we say hi to each other at the end? Um, I don't think that doing a webinar like this it lets that happen. You might have done Zoom meetings where you can like had your own camera on you, but this is um, a different setup than that called a webinar. Um, so I don't think you guys can can do that. Um, uh, Milo says, "Cooch, cooch, cooch, dish, cooch, dish, cut." Yeah, it's just, it's really hard to say. <laughs> Cuchicetus, Kuch, yeah, Cuchicetus, cool. All right, cool, so um, great. So let's see here, we have about 15 minutes to do an activity. So what I'm thinking is, that would be cool, is to pick any one of these dinosaurs or animals and you can choose if you want to do a, a clay model of it or if you want to add it to your landscape photo. Uh, I mean, your landscape, um, like this poster that we, that we made together, if you want to add it to that. Or if, you want, if you're fast enough to do both, then that's cool too. Um, and then what else would be cool, I think, would be to do the one where we draw the fossil of, of maybe a plant or an animal. We'd make a drawing of what the fossil might look like of a plant um, or animal of long ago. So um, I think I'm going to start by drawing, I want to draw that fish, this, the dunk, <laughs> I love its name too, the dunkleosteus, dunkle, or dunkleos, dunkle, dunkleostus, dunkleostus? Um, the dunkle's bone fish, the one ton, 30 foot long, crazy looking fish. I think I want to try drawing that. Um, I'm going to do like a really quick new poster um, like land uh, of just being underwater and then draw the fish. And I think that would be really fun. And then, um, and then if we have time, we'll do a, uh, we'll do a drawing of fossils as well. So you guys can go ahead and um, 
you guys can go ahead and follow along with me. Okay, let's see. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Mackenzie and Denali are saying it said dime, dimetrodon, dimetrodon. Okay, thank you. Did I get that right? Evan says I have a dinosaur model of a dimetrodon. Cool, that's awesome. Isis says, can you look at the saber tooth tiger? Yes, for sure. Let's go over there. There's a saber tooth. It doesn't look like it's the full image of it, um, but it's got the front part of it there. <laughs> Mackenzie and Denali says, yes, you got it right this time. Yay, thank you. <laughs> okay, all right, let's get to drawing. We have about, um, I think 15 minutes left. So um, you can pick what you just, basically just pick what, what animal you want. I'm gonna, um, Isis, I'm sorry, I have to zoom out a little bit here um, so that everyone can see some of these animals. And then, um, here, let me zoom in a little bit more. And just into the pictures of the animals. Mm, let me zoom out one more time, maybe. It's kind of small, but, um, if you need me to zoom in on one particular one that you want, just let me know and I'll zoom in and out a lot. Um, okay, so there we go. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna draw the um, dunkly, dunkleostis, dunkleosteus, dunkle bone. It looks a little tricky, but it'll be fun. I think one of you might have sent me a drawing of that that you had done already. That was really cool. That's what inspired me to draw this one. So let's see here. Dunkle, I'm just going to call it the Dunkle. Milo says Sabretooth. Um, yeah, Sabretooth is in the upper right corner. Um, but its actual name is the Smilodon. Um, but yeah, but we, I think most people just know it as the Sabretooth Tiger. Mauricio says donkeys are so cute. <laughs> yeah, they, they definitely are. Evelyn says I did the deer. Wow, that's so fast. Good job. Oh, Milo says zoom in on the saber tooth tiger. Okay, yeah, totally. Um, as, uh, let's see, do you have to draw a dinosaur or like a different color snake? Um, yeah, sure. If you want to draw a snake, you can do that. Um, I don't think we have, there's no pictures of snakes here, but um, I think if you want to, I think it'd be cool if you wanted to just draw any of the ones in here. Um, and then you can just tell me which one you want and I can zoom in on it for you. We're gonna take a look at the saber-tooth tiger first. 
Katya says, I did the deer. Nice. Awesome. Here's the saber tooth tiger. Let's zoom in a little bit more here. Okay, that's pretty good. April says, I did, I did the deer too. Okay, nice. All right, I'm going to have to just remember what the dunkel looked like, I guess. Sort of like uh, crazy looking teeth. Okay. Um, okay. Take a, like a, just remember what this looks like for a second. I'm just going to zoom in on the dunkel again real quick. And then I'm going to zoom in on the deer for uh, Katya. Um, dunkel source. Okay. Interesting. Crazy. Okay. And then I think this is the one. Is this the deer that you guys wanted me to zoom in on? Evan says I'm doing the Mary Chip. It's cool. Nice. Angelica says, can you zoom out? Um, yes. Somebody else was asking to zoom in on the deer. So we're going to do that first. And then I'll zoom out. And then if you guys that are doing the Cyber 2 Tiger need more time on that, let me know. And I can zoom back in on that later. Okay, Aubrey says, Triceratops done. Nice, good job, really cool. Katya says, this is the deer, okay.
Okay. All right. So I drew <laughs> the dunkle as best as I could. Um, if, uh, if you guys wanted to share your, um, or here, can you see that more or less? There we go. <clears throat> it's just, it, he's under the ocean waves and it's raining there. Okay, let's see. Oh, can you zoom in on the T-Rex? Yes, for sure. Let's do a T-Rex. We have only a minute left though. So I guess we got to go pretty quick here. Um, T-Rex is right here. T-Rex, can you zoom in on the T-Rex? There we go. Katya says done with the deer. Great. Mauricio says don't, Triceratops done too. Very awesome. A-Rav says, can you zoom in on the T-Rex? Yes, here you go. Um, is there more pages? Unfortunately not, this is the end of the book. Um, if you wanted to go back and read it again though, you can download it if you go to Heron Books, um, that website there um, has it for free. You can just download it and have it on your computer. Evan says, I'm done with Mary Chippis. Your drawing is amazing. Oh, thank you very much. I'm sure yours is really good too. Okay, so what I wanna do now really quick, I only have a minute left, but I wanna write down the email address again um, where I want you guys to send your, um, your work. Cause I, seeing your work is really, just really makes me feel happy and it's really great to see what you guys are able to do. So, um, just go ahead. Um, oh, here's the email address. Um, it's, uh, events. At Delphian dot org. Um, oh yeah, let me stop the screen share again. So if you're doing the T-Rex, I think you're gonna have to, if you need to look at the picture, just go ahead and download the, um, the book. It's, for, it's free, so you can just go down, go download it and scroll down until you get to the T-Rex. Uh, okay, so here's the email address, events at delphian.org. Um, thank you so much everyone for tuning in and doing this webinar with me. It's been really fun. I had a lot of fun doing this with all of you. Um, and, uh, drawing dinosaurs, learning about dinosaurs and animals of long ago. I, um, I hadn't read the book before, so I really learned a lot with you guys. And that was really fun for me seeing, um, seeing all of your guys' work was really exciting. And uh, thank you for everyone who sent it in. I hope you send in whatever you drew today. That would be really cool. Um, and I'll, I'll respond to each one personally. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, I think that's about it. That about wraps it up. Um, it's been a really fun few weeks and uh, I hope I'll get to talk with you guys at some point in the future. Um, thanks again. My name is Sterling. This has been another Delphian webinar and uh, I'll see you around. Bye-bye.